going to be yeah. a different type of open. You've never heard this sound. Maybe this will even be in the pot. You ready for this? All right, here yeah. we go. If this explodes on my computer. I'm so nervous for you right now. Please don't explode on my laptop. Oh, no, we're good. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. No puns allowed. Paige and Adam. And a few things. I believe, how many episodes have we done of this podcast? Uh, probably 110, 111. Okay, there's a couple things there. I, I, I believe this is the first pod that we've done that I, I do not have alcohol. Uh, this is not for lack of effort. I'll explain yeah. why. In also, the... a little alarming to think about all of the beers that have been consumed now, by me during this pod. Like it, bottles of wine. Yeah, in 110. The... Yeah. So, okay. So we'll talk hardball. We got lots of stuff to talk about. But I am in Orlando for a trade show. If it sounds like I have been eating cigarettes for the last two days, I haven't been. Uh, I've just been talking to people. I'm, I'm here not as a college football person, but selling golden teas at the PJ yeah. Merchandise Show, which is also... Super cool. I think you would love this show. You love golf. So I think you would like, but the merchandise show has everything from like $50,000 golf carts to like golf grips to like, you name it. Like it is a they massive have like golf show. Attire? And golden tees, by the way. Golf attire? Oh my God. Yeah. Like an entire section dedicated to golf attire. Um, Like an uh. entire wing. Titleist. Um, the Titleist reps all wear like these white suede jackets which would I, you know me uh, being the clumsy yeah. person I, I would screw that up you, immediately yeah, i um, wouldn't trust you with a white jacket I, 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 and you've seen also some of my golden tea wear i decided not to wear this on the pod i'm going more uh, well i got my smu gear today so we're traveling we're disheveled i sound like shit you got on you said you know whoa what's going on here and i do have a <laughs> confession it was it, it was a late night last night um and do you know where I ended up at two in the morning? Where? Um, Senor Frogs. Senor fucking Frogs. Uh, wow, that's like I'm spring in break vibes. I know. I haven't been. I haven't been there since I was nineteen years old, and I don't think I'll be there again anytime soon. But we. we I'm did so it. proud of you. We, we did honestly, it. like full disclosure, like we even when we were in new york like we would go get a drink but like we were in bed by like 10 like you and i are very much on the yeah. same page of like we like to have a good time but we also really enjoy going to bed at a decent hour and i've hit the, yes, the i need i need to be convinced to do this now yeah it takes as a the little elder bit the pod. I think, it... yeah it i mean i'm i'm in that same boat too i don't know why maybe it's just because like having worked the the schedule that we have not that like a regular nine to five is not grueling enough but um i think with the chaos of it all we've definitely pulled back not to say that we haven't done our our due justice in new orleans before um but yeah we do have a ton to get to um i guess off Tons. the top we should talk about our friends in municipal um no punts 20 love municipal them. We do love them. Um, get your gear. Send us pictures of you, us in your gear. Tag them. Their social team is really great. Oh, um, oh. I, I don't oh, have a municipal shirt, but you know what I wore today? I wore I'm my so shoes proud today. Of you. At my trade, you at were the trade so show. excited. You did preview that that you were so... going to wear them. I um, also when I got I just got back and uh -huh. um, there was a there was like a scuff. I sprinted here or like I don't know what the hell was on here was able to de to clean these things Stop up. It. I'm trying to yes. keep them fresh. I love that. So I don't have my, 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 yeah, I had a shoe. I did not even plan to have a shoe next to me, but I do. It worked out well. Look at that. You know, Look at that. We, we sometimes just, it just works out. It just flows. It just flows. Um, but yes, we love our, our sponsors at Municipal. Um, thank you for allowing us to do this show. And um, I just want to say this podcast was right. Um, we said that Jim Harbaugh would be gone. We... I can't remember if we had this conversation, but I'm pretty sure that we said that the Chargers were probably the best fit. Um, I found that to yep. be like the, the Herbert situation to be like, he's a weird dude. Like he's going to do it his way and they're willing to pay him to do it his way. And sure enough, uh, Jim Harbaugh is going to the NFL. Your initial thoughts. So yeah, not shocked. In fact, it's funny. You mentioned that we've been all over this. We've been all over this since like June. Okay, of last yeah, year. We're like, bye. Um, He's leaving. And, and bye. 
he's leaving. And I think I remember for whatever bold prediction I wrote for BR, it's like Jim Harbaugh is going to win a national championship and leave. And he, so, okay. There's a, there's a couple things. This was inevitable and it seems like a really good situation for all parties. Um, mm -hmm. For him, for Justin Herbert, for the chargers, the chargers are like perpetual losers. Okay. They, yeah. they really are. And they have a lot of talent. They have a great foundation. Um, this makes a ton of sense for all parties. So that part fits. I none of, no one's shocked by this, but what I what I wrote for Bleacher Report and will be out here soonish is tomorrow. You know, or today, tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, it's a, it's tomorrow it's, today. It's behind the current humor playing out. Uh, is um like I think it's a big void. Whether you whether you like Harbaugh or you don't, I think most people probably don't. You're not indifferent to Jim Harbaugh. You have strong feelings, and if you have strong feelings about a personality. That's a loss. Like this is a this is a sport where players come and go regularly, and coaches are the constant. Well, we've lost Nick Saban and we've lost yeah. Jim Harbaugh, and I that sucks. I, I to me that sucks, and it's it sucks because they make things fun. Even when he drives us crazy, and I know he, he's driven you crazy a lot longer than maybe some of his stuff yeah. has driven me crazy. That's that's good for the brand of college football, and I think mm -hmm. again, I think Michigan will be fine. But this is an enormous void, I think, for the sport. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think one thing I will say is that I do appreciate how much Jim Harbaugh has been an advocate for players and making college football yes. the best version of itself for players. Um, so I definitely don't want to take that away from him. Obviously, a very good football coach, won a national championship year. The scandals and the, the quirky quotes and the just the frustration with his inability to answer questions for silent reporters um, will certainly be missed on my end. I Goodbye, like, see you later, <laughs> or won't be missed, I should say. Yeah. Um, I do feel like college football is really shifting. I also just want to say, we had this conversation about Nick Saban, the laziness of the narrative that college football being the way that it is is the reason that these guys are leaving is so ridiculous. Like, I just stop, just stop that with that narrative. It's not true. Like, if you're a football coach, you're going to figure it out. If you want to do it at this profession, I think for for Jim Harbaugh specifically, what happened at Michigan and the NCAA and all that stuff probably played a part in him leaving for the NFL now. But I don't think that's the reason why. he. We've had this conversation over the last, what, six years of whether or not he's going to the NFL. So I just don't think that that in college football changed mostly in the last two. Like, I don't think that's really why this is happening um but like to your point i think it's the perfect intersection for them and i know they haven't named um a michigan um head coach as of now when we are yes a replacement as of now when we are recording but sharon moore obviously proved that he can do the job and we're expected to hear that he is the coach um i don't think that they're going to go out of the box with this i think you do what's safe he's been around he knows what everything you know what i mean it just it just makes sense but do you yeah. get any sense that they would look elsewhere or do you think that's kind of a perfect fit and perfect segue into keeping michigan where it is yeah so like you it's a really interesting question because i'm reading twitter and it's like well give brian kelly a call so if you're michigan do you like make a couple of calls or you just say because here's the other piece of this alabama fans are dealing with it we could probably talk about it again. Is the 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 roster like your your you know Michigan's roster is already being gutted by the draft, uh, just like Bama was, and now you have to do whatever you can as quickly as possible to maintain the structure. Sharon Moore, I think, would do that. Yeah, right. I, it seems like he's liked all of this, and so I, you know, I I think that makes a lot of sense. The other the other part of this, I mean, I, I just I happen to look at like. Jim Harbaugh's tenure at Michigan, mm -hmm. like in totality, right? So I just yes. some of this is really interesting. He finishes with a record of of eighty six and twenty five. He was hired in twenty fifteen, right? He's been there a long time. It, that was the mm -hmm. other thing that was jarring when I looked at this. I'm like, my God, the dude. Um, he's lived like seasons? nine. He's lived so many lives you know, at Michigan. He's lived so. That's ex that's exactly the, you know. So you look at it. The COVID year, they finished two and four, and they almost canned him, 
right? Like that was it. And yeah, he finishes 12 and 2, 13 and 1, and 12 and 0. I guess 12 and 0 is because of the suspensions and whatnot, right? So mm-hmm. the dude lived a lot of lives and he yeah. survived it and actually walks out a champion. It's it's a this is not the normal trajectory, I think, for a lot of coaches that leave college football. Yeah, absolutely not. I um I don't think they should call anyone else, but I do find it fascinating that like I remember in college football when like the coaching search, like people would take their time and we talked about this with Saban. And now you cannot wait because of that thirty day window after um, you know, a coach is gone that the these kids get to enter their name into the transfer portal and it just becomes pure chaos. Um it is fascinating how quickly we are getting coach head coaches named and things moving so fast. Um, it is wild. I also think this like 30 day window thing is insane too. Like we've had so much yes. movement over the last, because of the fact that there's like domino effect of save and retiring. And one of the beneficiaries of this, who we essentially kind of talk shit about at the beginning of the transfer portal window in December was Ohio State we were like well, what are they doing where what are they doing at quarterback what are they like what's the deal with Ryan Day like how do they get there and essentially it seems like now they are kind of like what we talked about with Ole Miss they are throwing all the money in the world yeah and going win now is that kind of the vibe that you've gotten from what's been happening in Ohio State the last week or so I've been trying to ask around about money Mm-hmm. Let's get to the, let's get to, you mentioned it all in, like what kind of money is being set, spent here? So, you know, you get the number one quarterback in the class. So, and here's the other thing, right? Transfer portal is, is transfer portal. We've seen like a Michael Penix or a Bo Nix experienced quarterbacks. That's one way to do it. But Ohio State's doing everything. They went and got the best running back in football. They went and got a quarterback who I think is a really interesting piece of Will Howard. I think, if you yeah. want to, if you want to have questions about Ryan Day's plan, you could say, "Well, your fate depends on Will Howard and Bill O'Brien." And it could be good, it could be not. Like I'm not yeah, gonna, I'm Bill not gonna O'Brien. go in. But like Caleb Downs, who we talked about a lot throughout the years, like one of the best young defensive backs I've I've ever seen ever. Oh, man. Um, and and you get an elite freshman quarterback who, you know, maybe he'll play this year, or if not, there's your long term plan. So. And then Harbaugh retired, or Harbaugh leaves, excuse me. Yeah. Like, everything is coming up Ryan Day. So, that's yep. amazing. But doesn't this add to all of the pressure, the pressure. now? Like, there Completely. was already a shit ton of pressure. But, oh, yeah. But now it's like, oh, my God, it's it it's going to be even larger. Yeah. Um. To There is a scene in Bring It On where the old cheer captain comes to the new cheer captain. She's like, I gave it to you on a silver platter. Like, how easy could this be? Like, this is Ryan Day's silver platter moment. Like, he has been given all the money. He has been given the time. And now he's been given the opportunity to just win now. And this year's pressure is going to be exponentially more. You got the Harbaugh factor out of the way. Um, yes, you're going to see new opponents because you have new people joining your conference, but it's a 12 team playoff. So you're going to get in likely and they're going to get you in. have an opportunity to win games and be physically better than a lot of the other teams that could make this playoff with 12 teams. So it is, it is win now. And honestly, as someone who's been like kind of a Ryan day, like apologist, because I really do think he's a very good coach. And I hate that fans get so hard on him it makes me a little bit nervous about um this pressure and the amount of like here and now in the moment you need to win this that's going to be going on this next season yeah he can but do it I believe they are him. loaded for the f- yeah he, I, I think he could do it too no I'd like I, I I I think um before Kirby Smart could win he was Ryan Day Jim Harbaugh was Ryan Day for a really yeah, long time too. So true. So I, I'm looking like, up that odds was the to see. So I. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what the odds were for the championship winner? I know Georgia was the first, but do you remember what the value was? 
because I think the they're last plus week, 340. Okay. I shouldn't, I Georgia's shouldn't know that. Georgia's plus 330, but I think I do. and then Ohio State's plus 500, which, I mean, yeah, I just think it is a very interesting dynamic. I, this year could be wonky with the 12 team playoff. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm excited. I mean, I'm very excited. And if you're an Ohio State fan, I think you have to be excited too because the narrative in December was, oh my God, Ryan Day is not getting in the portal. How is he going to win? How are we going to fix this? What's going on? And then now it's like, oh, okay, here we are. We're ready. Well, they they also, I mean, to tie a bow on it, a lot of their guys, Jack Sawyer and others, returned. So beyond the portal, they got phenomenal u- news from just people, you know, NIL. That yeah. started like weeks ago where mm-hmm. they loaded up. They're like, holy shit, like their defensive line is going to be the best in college football. Like it started Actually, then. Now that I think about it, timing wise, it was like when they started really getting portal names was the window was technically closed, but the window for putting your name in for the draft was at the exact same yes. time. So that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's these dates, it, as someone who, this is another behind the scenes thing, as someone who covers college football, usually these weeks are kind of more mellow. The last like three weeks for us has been incredibly intense because of transfer portal coaching things, all of, all of the above. But, um, and I'm trying to be as patient as possible because I know things will be remedied in terms of like rules and regulations for this stuff. But I think this year of college football is going to be pure chaos in general because we're going to have so many great, firsts yeah. that it's like it, it is going to be very new we're not going to get the the usual script which i'm actually kind of excited about um and it's insane i can't believe it's already almost national signing day like i feel like we blinked and a month has gone by I wrote this in my harbaugh saving piece mm-hmm. that i think this is a before and after moment for college football i i do yeah. I, I i think when you look at realignment and the playoff and NIL being the shit show that it is, um, you know, it, to, to your to your point, right? Saban and Harbaugh leaving. It's like, well, these guys are running away from their problems. And that, and that is a reckless take. And I kind of talk about that. Like, whether they are or not, like, it, it, it's yeah. unfair for us to say that. Especially with, with, with both of them, frankly. But with Harbaugh, like, this is, you've known this forever. Like, everybody has known yeah. this is the conclusion. So, but there is a Wild West feel to the sport. It is as popular as it's ever been, and it has very little structure. The playoff isn't even defined yet, by the way. We yeah. don't know who's broadcasting it. The Pac-12 still is supposed to get a spot. It doesn't exist. This is this year. This is like Pac six fucking does, months but... from now. And well, we don't... Yeah, it, it, but Pac-2. Yes. It's insanity. It's straight up insanity. But I also, like, okay, first, I want to say, on this podcast, we will um, define this moment as you know b bs or as so before saban or after saban i think that's a great way to look at college football going forward um i think that's a great way for us to do it we'll do bs or as that's how we're gonna quantify things going forward um for saban, that's pretty good that thank you um i know it's on the spot like that um but the other part that just really annoys me about that take is people who like forget that like college football was very very flawed before we changed and had the playoff like I'm sure there are people that will say the BCS was not flawed but like it was um you know I'm sure there are people that will say you know when before when we didn't pay play pay a players holy smokes that that was a way better world to live in but again like those things sucked about college football like that sucked that Reggie Bush got his Heisman taken away for taking cash when Caleb Williams is living in a penthouse in LA now okay so this is there's been flaws with the sport there's going to continue to be flaws with the sport and how it grows and so having that take of like oh because it's changed like this is why it's like okay there were there coaches retiring when the playoff was created that people were like oh because there's a playoff you know coaches don't want that challenge like come on no especially any coach any competitive human being? What a joke. What a joke. No. To your, to your point about Harbaugh, there, there will be a rev share in college football at some point with the players. Yeah. He's he's pushed for it. His 
his little playoff campaign. He said it at every press conference. He was yep. asked about it. And I, I do. I think this actually, it's a really fair point with him. Like we've, you haven't always agreed with a lot of the things he said and his mannerisms are fuck, fucking weird, but he, his team loves him because yeah. he's real. And it, and I think in this stuff where, you know, pay cuts during COVID and he, and it, like he's done a lot of good. That's probably unspoken. And I think it can be unspoken because he's just so peculiar. Um, yeah. That being said, the, 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 the state of the sport, um, like, I think all of this is good for business. Now I come from a marketing background where it's like, you know, no, all press is good press. That That's not it true. Is. Okay. That is definitely not true. But I do think in this instance in college football, there's a, it's kind of, and we've talked about this, the NBA, you know, year three, four years ago was on this roll because the off season was almost as interesting, more interesting than the actual right. results. College football Saturdays are always going to be sacred. Like no matter what we're going to bitch, we're going to say this is broken and then we're all going to do it. The transfer portal and NIL has created a, a free agency that yeah. moves fast and is abrupt and weird. And we don't love it, but we are damn fucking intrigued by it. We can't yeah. help but turn away. It's now a year-round sport. Like, it's now a year-round sport. Yep. You want to know why the NFL and the NBA and leagues, like even world football and like the Premier League and just transfers with that. It just, it those things are the greatest money makers in terms of sports in the world because of that factor. It is a year-round deal. And I think that's where like baseball loses its flavor a little bit. Because I think the yes. season is so long and they don't give enough interest. Yes, where people land is definitely interesting. I know Shohei and all that stuff. There's moments for sure in flashes. But like to your point also, the NBA started the in-link tournament. Like every sport is evolving yep. with how the business evolves. And the other part of this that we're totally, you know, glossing over is betting. Betting on sports, legal sports betting yep. is a huge part of why college football, in my opinion, is more popular than ever. And that's, we love yes. that. And there are going to be people that hate that sports betting is legal. And it is, it, there's always going to be something. So speaking of sports betting, actually, um, we do have to talk about I, I, uh, I know the former Oof. LSU player that was potentially caught with an account that he was affiliated with betting on all of college football, but specifically six LSU games, I think. And yeah. that is, buddy, that's not good. I, my piece of advice for those who are coaching or are playing, just don't bet on the sport that you coach or play. Like, that's my, just don't do it. So, so okay, I have been off the grid much of today. Uh -huh. But if I'm reading this correct, 8,900 wagers. That is that is the number that he bet, Boudet. Eight, yeah. So 9,000 bets with at least 17 bets on football games, including at least six on LSU football, according to police. Um, and this has been on the, uh, this has been in the mix for quite some time. Um, mm -hmm. We can talk about this specifically. I can tell you right now, there are ADs and players shitting their pants over this. Yes. This is not a singular situation to a player. Totally specific player that does not excuse this however you no. feel about this like no but it's um, a it's a gray th area this is, this is a major problem in college football like this is and and you know like the nfl had its gambling it still does like people players betting and you oh. saw how the nfl reacted like hammer like really strong yeah. hammer made rules got a little lenient on some like what okay maybe we went too far night i think it's a nightmare scenario for college football I really do. I, I think that this is way more accessible. And we saw it with Iowa and Iowa State. We're still trying to figure out what happened. But my first reaction to this news isn't like, oh, this is this is just one player. The magnitude of the betting is unbelievable. Yeah. It, it, it where what is like having Where's talked to people about this. Yes, people are very, very nervous about this problem. Yeah. Because I it I mean, as someone who works in sports and we know, I know people give Herb Street a hard time for not betting on games he calls. Like, there is a gray area and you want to make sure you're being responsible about it. Um, but I think when you're dealing with kids who also have, 
you know, the funds to do this stuff now uh, yep. makes it a little trickier. Yeah, true. And but again, they are adults and they're of the legal age and things like that. It does. It is hard. It's a it's a catch twenty two. So I don't know, you know, legally what kind of trouble he's going to be in, and then also, um, you know. The school is obviously not going to be punished, but when this happens to kids who are still in school and those type of things, I'm curious what the NCAA does in terms of punishment for this kind of stuff. I I think that what I would I would be curious behind the scenes of these like what education is going on uh -huh. and how this is being conveyed because we really don't hear a lot about it until it's exploding. And you know how we know how these coaches are. They are, they're, they're, they, they want to control. And I don't mean this in a negative way, but they want to make sure that they're controlling aspects of this when, it, you know, law uh, elements, right? Georgia, mm -hmm. the speeding. But, and, and again, uh, these things are all very different. You know that these are talking points within them. This could really screw things up for kids, yeah. for schools, for coaches. And I don't think it, gambling is so accessible. I think that, of course, it's going to be accessed. Yeah. Now, but the part of this, too, that really, the betting on games that you're in, you, you want to get like, okay, the gambling stuff, fake accounts, betting on yep. games you're in, in that capacity is like danger zone. Gambling yeah. is an important part of this sport. You and I love it. You start to challenge the authenticity of these games. When you hear this yeah. stuff, fairly or unfairly, that's what people are going to assume is that what I'm betting on isn't real or that yeah. it's compromised. That's and why the NFL have is reacting as strongly people as People blading the scripts. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, I yeah. do, before we get into like random shit and anything else we have to talk about, I do want to talk about the situation in Arizona. Um, yeah. Our athletic director was let go, Dave Hickey, and I um, am frustrated by this because um, we talked about this last week where, you know, the school had a, a CFO that mismanaged a budget. She kept her job and President Robbins was the person that allowed her to keep her job in some capacity. And like that obviously upset a lot of people. But now to have our athletic director who has done such a great job um, since we lost Greg Burned Alabama, um, taking the fall and Robbins trying to keep his job at any cost has I just want to say as an Arizona fan and an Arizona alumni like that to me is just absolutely ridiculous if you're going to lend our athletics department 50 million dollars and expect like that's that's you that's your choice not and you're saying that it was mismanaged and you know that's why we could have potentially lost Jed Fish is seems a little fall guy-esque so I just want to say that is how I feel about that situation and that is very, very frustrating because, you know, we have an NCAA rule where like coaches, you know, can't have fall guys, but yet our our university president is using athletic directors as a fall guy. So yeah, not great. So so question about this too, because the timing yes. was bizarre. So yes. you hire you hire a football coach and like what was it, like days later this happened? So you let this you you let a person that you let go hire this coach and then you get rid of him. And mm -hmm. I, I was going to ask you about this because it's like extremely unorthodox. Everything about this is unorthodox, but why, yeah. why do that? Like what? Because why, there, there was a petition he, asking him to resign. There's a petition from, you know, administrators at the university and people and students who work for the university that had asked for his resignation and resignation. And, that's why they, and he, and, and, and you have to do something when things like that come up or make it publicly look good. And it seems like that, that very much from the, by the way, I have no inside information on this. This is all based on what I've seen going on. And this is what it looks like from an outside perspective. And it's not great. But yes, I, I do know that there was a petition a couple of days before this happened. And I'm sure there was something in the works. It was also interesting that it's just a very, it's a weird situation. And it's like, we're, one, I'm so happy with Brent Brennan being hired and everything like that. Like, it just was such a yeah. high for Arizona fans. And then just to be, like, dropped one more thing um, on that front is very, very complicated. And, like, going back as an Arizona fan, going back to, you know, the FBI investigation and Sean Miller and everything with that, the school 
has had its issues since that point in dealing with some of the logistics and the politics behind it um, is all very sketchy and murky. And there are a lot of really good people that would be great um, athletic directors at U of A. Um, but it's unfortunate that I think someone who did a very good job um, lost their job because of stuff that may have been out of his control. Well, okay, two things. A, so you think it was sudden. So like you hire this football, they're not saying, oh, you hire the football coach and then you're out. Right. Like, I mean, this had to have been I don't sudden, think he had, I would assume. I don't Otherwise, think he, I don't think he had any idea that he was being let go, if I had to, to guess. Well, uh, and the other thing is, you got Dino Babers today. Do you have any thoughts about that? Did you see that? No, I didn't. They uh, made the announcement that, yes. Hey, yo. Uh, he is joining the staff. So, there you go. I like him, by the way. He's a good coach. I thought it was, it was a good hire. Yeah, we've got a lot Congrats. of really great people on that staff. I think, obviously, um, it's like a family culture. So I'm happy that family stays and Did, family doesn't travel. Spe speaking of which, who was the booster who released the statement? Like, uh, like oh, I wanted to that make Jed Fish's life. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, that's saying a that little there was tampering. Much. Yeah, there are some. Well, let me just on. explain something. I know. Remember, we talked about the list of like very wealthy boosters pushing forward. Yes. And uh, programs. And we talked about Texas. We talked about Texas AM. There was a list that came out. And I'm like pretty sure that Arizona was in the top 10 of like schools with excessively wealthy boosters willing to you know give i mean if i had i'm being honest with you if i was like rolling in it i would so everyone at arizona please pray that i end up in a situation where i can give millions and millions of dollars to the school because i will i will i i will absolutely do it um so it is humberto lopez mm -hmm. okay he's a real estate guy and in they released the ta the personal so he he released they released the message that he sent to Jed Fish and he said you could have been a legend here in Arizona had you stayed I went out of my way to make sure you didn't get our best players, um and then there's a bunch of other statements now, that's basically saying I I wrote a check so yeah my quarter, your court our quarterback would stay right like mm -hmm. which, God college football is out of control right now like I I get well, it I'm actually like whatever well, you gotta do buddy his issue but, was that shit. Jed was reaching out to guys that n their names were not in the portal that was his problem was that he was going after players that had not put their names in and were making sure that people came with him that were not even supposed to be he wasn't supposed to be in contact with over those things so that I think was where you, the, the you comment rarely came from. hear the the part of this that's very interesting. You mm -hmm. rarely hear from the bagmen. They they actually like the notoriety of doing this behind the scenes. And there's claps and like here, here. Mm -hmm. You rarely hear the bagmen step out and say, Fuck you. I'm good. We're gonna keep these guys. You you shook my hand, which he said, and and Yeah. So I, I, I good, think the other problem is that there's the the university itself has a PR problem with money right now where like if players yes. want to come there, they're looking at the fact that their financial situation. Jed alluded to the fact that like they couldn't pay him the money that he wanted, and that's partially why he left. So, and this is a lot of you know image a, repair yeah. of the fact that like there's not money at Arizona to be had and made by people. So I think, I mean, I'm all for it. I'm like, whatever, I don't care. Get whoever, whatever we need to get I, you know a court, the best quarterback and the best receivers staying. And even the best defensive players. Like, Everybody I, else is just, doing. Well, and also yeah. shout out to T-Mac and Noah Fafita because they asked that their um, NIL money be spread around to some of the other players that have not been given as much over the year um, to kind of make them feel more appreciated and more likely to stay. So, look, I, I have no issue with it. It is a little rough around the edges, but I think there's like a huge – PR problem and everyone is trying to like stop the you know cover the holes right now and the boat is sinking but I think they're trying to make it look like everything is is fine in terms of finances which is clearly not the case so I hope they figure it out but yeah having um our athletic director fired right after hiring a slam dunk of a coach just felt like a very weird situation especially when it's like 
you're in charge of the staff that mismanaged $240 million. You guys gave the athletic department a $50 loan. That's your choice to agree to that. Yep. And your CFO, and you left her in a position where she still makes $500,000 a year and had this massive buck up and is not being held accountable. So yeah, people are pissed. There's a lot of discussion yeah. around him keeping his job. I think the uh, the corporate a-hole in me, and there is some of that, would say uh-huh. if it, it, it was a fuck up this bad, you kind of got to go scorched earth, right? Yeah. Okay, you need fall. It's not a fall guy. You like, yeah, yeah. You you kind of well. I that's get it. Like, well, that was the point. Here, is people the po- were just saying, "Hey, you you let this happen not only on the financial side for the university, but you also let this happen to our athletic department." So like it's it, it's your responsibility, yeah. and there's a lot of f ups that have happened. But yeah, the there yep. needs to be some accountability. And if you were gonna go scorched earth, so you're gonna take out the ad, but you're gonna let the former CFO still have a, a spot and a comfy job. That ain't that ain't scorched earth. Yeah, you're leaving. Yeah. you're leaving remnants of a you're of, of a really tough time. You're being I mean, a politician. That, that you are being a politician. Um, yeah. yeah, so it is not a great situation over there. But like I said, hopefully I win the lottery um, or, you know, someone wants to sponsor our podcast for millions and millions of dollars so I can get those millions and millions of dollars to the University of Arizona because I will. So there's that. I Since you did an Arizona thing, uh, real quick, Iowa yes. got a five-star lineman, one of the best uh, prospects in football. Pretty Proud neat. Pretty neat. Um, on that the was non-neat the Iowa side, mid- they still don't have a... F- the most mid- Iowa thing you could have said, we got a lineman and it was pretty neat. All you needed to do was say, oh, that's it. And you would have been... I, well, but, but we still don't have an offensive coordinator, okay? So we have a five-star lineman, but we don't have an offensive coordinator. It it it, it's, it blows my mind. It, it It's just truly... Uh, unacceptable to be quite honest the Rams defensive coordinator point. is becoming that's, it. that's my takes the Falcons head coach sorry I don't know breaking news what just what, what, two random shit Belichick just Morris? not nobody wants him to draft players Does, I guess that so Raheem Morris is now is the Falcons the, head coach by the way I guess so, we could talk some what, NFL many, if we wanted to. Yes. Um, I'm so nervous for my football team this weekend. I just like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm so stressed out. I need Debo to be healthy. Like I just, there's like one thing that I get to be a fan of. Honestly, everything else I pretty much cover in some capacity, whether it be mm-hmm. like work-wise or non-work-wise. Like, um, Sure. Being a 49ers fan is like my true fandom that I get. And I I I always forget how like into it I really am and how like dedicated I am until I actually like get to relax after college football season is over and like watch a game that like really matters. Cause I mean I, they've been very good all year long. Yes, they had a little bit of a slump and a, a losing streak in there, but I wasn't worried or concerned. Mm-hmm. Um now, after watching that game against the Packers, I, I'm i so nervous. And I know America wants the Lions to win. And game. it just makes me... I also, like, no matter what, if the Niners win, they have to play somebody that they've lost a Super Bowl to in my lifetime. And, like, I just... I, I, can't, I can't do it. And I also can't decide who I'm more afraid of. I understand that the, the uh, Chiefs are not as, like, stacked as they have been in years past and like lead the league and like drops and stuff. But like, I have seen what Patrick Mahomes can do and I still fear him. I also fear going against Andy Reed. And like, then I look at the Ravens and I'm like, Oh, Lamar, like you still should be worried of this Ravens team. And I'm like, this is just my worst nightmare having to like either exercise some demon of Super Bowl's past. And I just, I'm kind of hoping that it's the Chiefs because I feel like they're a better matchup for us. But again, like for the reasons that I said before, it still just makes me on edge. And as you can tell, I'm very stressed about it and I, thinking I'm putting the the carriage before I, the horse, you know, getting the Super Bowl. But I 
I want it so bad, like so bad. I want it so bad. I uh, I, I know you don't feel sorry. You're going to be in the Super Bowl. But... Uh, okay. Well, no, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just comment on that in a second. Uh, I like the 49ers. I do, and I want, I want, I want happiness for you. So I'm, yes. I'll, Thank the you. 49ers are going to win this week, and they're going to play the Ravens, and they're going to beat the Ravens. Is okay. Um, I like that prediction. Like, Is there anything more like Paige? than like having Christian McCaffrey win a Super Bowl with the 49ers because being snubbed from the Heisman is one thing. But if if this if the Niners win the Super Bowl with Christian McCaffrey, which obviously is on the team, so they will. But if they win the Super Bowl, yes. I will let go of the fact that Christian was snubbed. You know, from you Heisman. won't. No, you, I will. You I'll let it go. I will let it go. Not. I will let it go. I promise. I will bring it up ever again. Scout's honor. That's how bad yeah, I want a Super Bowl. That's how bad I want a Super Bowl. Is I would give up having yes. that in my back pocket all the time to talk about if I it, I'm, I'm I really mean that I will give it up I will I, give up I, bringing um, up that snub if they win I uh, I I you do don't believe me at all as a Jets fan all of this by the way is just so painful like I, I I just I'm like it's like being at a kids table watching the adults fight I'm like yeah wow wow what are they talking about I I don't know joy. We're talking about Iowa, and they can't even get a fucking offensive coordinator hired. My my sports yeah. teams are incompetent. I want nice things for you. Um, Thank you. Maybe one day I will experience this in some capacity with yeah. any of my teams. Um, oh. But but as a Jets fan, I want to just real quick, Bill Belichick. Are you are you surprised by this? Like, like they're just like nah. I, I don't know. I don't even know what jobs are still open. Are there any jobs open now? Are they all filled? It's where my um, NFL knowledge has been. Like most of them are filled, right? Yeah. Like, I feel like so. Well, I feel like with Belichick, I don't know that he even wanted to keep coaching. Like I just, I I know he's like done the interviews and stuff, but I'm wondering if it's more like for optics than anything, and to try and get like some money out of it. But I don't know that he is really like in the mindset of that. I don't know and maybe people believe the narrative that like he had Tom Brady and that's why you know what I mean like that it I don't know I don't I don't think I it's weird think, at all because I, I think I think it's a control thing yeah oh absolutely well because we know he's probably one of the most controlling well, like and, human beings on planet earth yeah he wants roster control he wants every like this is, and he hasn't been very good at that if we're being completely honest like he he hasn't drafted well. They haven't they haven't, you know. He used to like when when you'd go get Randy Moss and you Corey Dillon and like you, there was a time when he was the goat at everything. But yeah. They like, um. I just find it fascinating as someone who's watched him from afar. He's in his seventies. He's not young. He's almost as old mm-hmm. as Nick Saban, right? A year behind. So I just. You know, it, it's he's done some interviews, I guess, with the Falcons, maybe others. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just wild. It's just wild that, you know, you see some of the coaches getting hired and he's not one of them. I don't know. Yeah. And maybe maybe it's not that wild to some, but to me, it, it is kind of interesting that he's probably sidelined. Yeah. So, um, Which is Yeah, that's my NFL take. Bang. We love NFL take. Um, and we can talk a little more about that. Um, Do you have any random shit for us? Um, you know... Airplanes, yeah. I, the people that fucking move their seats back. I know we've already done this, but I don't think like, we have. I think we were supposed recline, to talk about it. Okay, go ahead. What a bunch of motherfuckers they are! All right, what a bunch mm-hmm. of motherfuckers people who recline are. I, 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 I just the the guy in front of me on my plane. I, I like wanted to put him in a goddamn chokehold. Like I'm like, you know what? Okay. If I put my arm over, like not not hurt him seriously, but just like embarrass yeah. him. Right, I, 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 I get such anger, Paige, for the reclining of the seat. Okay, I see, cannot, and I, I used to I be like a this. non-reclining yeah. person, and maybe this is growth as a people pleaser. Um, I, if you are in um economy plus or first class, I think it's completely fine to recline your seat because there is more space. I think if you're in the back of the bus, fine. Don't don't mind you like being annoyed because there's so much little space but i also am in a like i cannot sleep on planes 
But if I am able to recline a little either. bit and not and not get the serious head bob going, that makes it way a way better experience for me. And I will say, having to fly across the country every other week for six weeks plus made it a lot easier to be able to recline my seat and not care because I just needed sleep and so I I used to be very against it I also used to be very against like taking your shoes off on planes I think if you have bare feet it's really really gross but if you have like socks on I actually don't mind because the pressure it, my feet hurt from my shoes. I know I've just I've become a terrible no. human. If you put them up on the seat, you're gross. Oh, but keep them like underneath oh, your seat. No. I know. I used to be so against okay. this thing, but if, having if, traveled if, so much, I just can't. But if you have bare feet, don't do that. Oh, it's so gross. okay. But don't put your feet up on other people's stuff. No. That is gross to me. This, this is the problem though. Okay. I, I can't get mad at you for these things because you you are like your feet, you want your feet to feel better. But people cannot be trusted with these powers. They cannot be trusted because yes. they, they get harnessed it, for bad. I think the thing with airport rules is like there's there's certain like it's gray areas. It's not so black and white. Like the reason I like loosen my tennis shoes a lot will be because like I have metal in one of my toes and it swells a little bit easier than the other one. I wear compression socks to help out, but it helps relieve some of the pressure in my legs to be able to do that. So I, I don't feel bad for people to do that it's disgusting when you take your shoe off and you put your foot up against the person that's sitting in front of you that is gross so it's like yes i'm okay with taking your shoes off but also like bare feet to me is just like so gross because also like why are your bare feet out on an airplane um because like for your own sanity and like oh, why, why 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 i just i can't do it i can't i just I, I, yeah i think people are people are also disgusting by the way yes like how people, are you about like food are, on planes? Do you do you mind if people bring food on planes? Yeah, I mind, but it depends on the food. Like yeah, <laughs> like that's the surefire know, way. Yeah, no tuna sandwiches. A fucking seafood platter. Like how? Hey, nice flight here. It's like, sir, fucking no. Okay, no. Um, but but people like bring on enormous meals. Yeah, like that's what getting to the airport a little early is for. Yeah. And if you and don't also, have that, like, don't bring on the buffet. Yeah. I also, I mean, flip side, if you're on like a Southwest flight and you don't want anyone to sit next to you, that's a surefire way to guarantee that no one sits by you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, I'm not, I will like, just bring nor a giant confirm fish nor sandwich. deny that uh, I've used this yeah. technique before on a Southwest flight. I will not, I will not disclose that information. I'm pleased with it. You're breaking all the rules. I know. You don't know who you are anymore. I know I've changed. You're, you're it, honestly, a having disruptor. to travel. Is, I am, but like in the nicest way. I'm actually very polite on planes. I respect people's yes. space, and I try. I I do find that I think before I was like overcompensating for other people being assholes during um, traveling, and now I have learned that like I am paying for these tickets, and well, not the ones that were for company things, but I'm. It, it's my. For I'm sure. allowed to use the space that that are on airplane um any other airplane things before I, we yeah if people have made i got it my this last long... my last take okay what do you what do you got <laughs> is it an airplane thing my last take you're right though if anyone's still yeah it is if on my plane i'm going to orlando right so we are and... uh we booked another disney trip in april we're going to disney oh, Sam and I. going back in april yeah so we'll talk disney stuff but um not now. I have noticed not just about planes, and I think I've mentioned this in the pod before, that when I hear kids crying in public, I I have this, I I get like almost anxiety. Um, people get mad at crying kids on planes. I get almost sad. Like there's a kid on the plane that I'm flying, the very back of the airplane who's crying. I don't want to fly. I put on my headphones and my ear pods. And I'm like, I, I'm like, I can't listen to this kid. Not because I'm, I'm annoyed. Yeah, I'm not annoyed. Like you, this shit happens. If you're a parent, you're like, I, because uh, I'm, my heart is breaking for everyone yes. involved, the mom, the dad, and the child. So I, I wish I, my kids are getting older. I feel like I'm gonna snap out of this at some point. Yeah, I'm not. I think it's getting worse for me. There is a meme that's like, you ask your best friend, like you get arrested for getting in a fight. Like, what was the fight over? 
mine would legitimately be someone being rude to a parent or a child on an airplane. I will lose my shit on someone if yes. they are rude to a parent on a plane. Like that is my biggest pet peeve is when people are make it worse and are dicks about it. We've talked about it on this podcast, but that is yes. genuinely if I were to ever get arrested for something, that would be it. Because I, I have zero patience for people that are rude to I agree. people trying to travel with children. They have every right to be there. And like I said, we have every right to take up space. It's like a therapy session. Um, yeah, no, I, I will honestly, that that is my biggest pet peeve in the entire world. Um, so we, it, like I said, if you have made it this long, congratulations, because you're going to hear some big news. <laughs> we have a very, very special guest. I'm not going to say who it is just yet. Um, a very, very special guest joining us next week. And um, let's just say you will very much enjoy it. I will also be ending dry January. So I will be drinking on the podcast. Kramer will be drinking on the podcast. This guest will likely be drinking on the podcast with us. Um, I'm so, so, so excited for her to be here. Um, Gave a little oh, hint there. Oh, I know. Yeah. Gave a little hint. I'm excited for her to be here and um, looking forward to it. Um, and we will give you guys sort of an update on off season things um next yes. week as well but any parting thoughts kramer before we wrap no this up? i gotta Our go quick and short I, I'm one going that out to lasts an, an hour i'm going out to a nice dinner tonight with some customers i think i'm gonna drink wine uh, oh you know, third third day third day on the road for work it's tough stamina is key um so maybe it's good i didn't drink on the pod but i'm ready to start drinking so i'm gonna go do that all right i've got a little bit of time left on dry january so all right, Sorry. well, for Adam and Paige, thanks for hanging out, guys.